I'm going to show you how to use granulator combined with samples to create very interesting rhythmic textures. Let's dive in. I'm going to start off the session by just quickly giving you an example of what I have prepared. There's piano sound in here. And if we put some effects on it. Sounds beautiful. If you don't have Granulator 3, an alternative to that is Granulator 2. It's made by the same developer, Robot Henke. And as you can see from Ableton's site directly, it's available as a download for Live 10 and Live 9 if you own Ableton Live. And if you're looking for an alternative to that, you can grab the Grain Freeze Max for Live device, which is also for free. I'm just going to put a link down below. So I'll create the new MIDI track here. And in this MIDI track, I'll put a Granulator 3. I'm just going to chuck it in here. And now we just need a sample. You can use any sample. I prefer using chords. Piano chords sound beautiful. We also got percussion sounds. You know what, I'm going to type in chords and see what I have here. Yeah, this one looks good. Sounds like there's a lot of tonal information inside here. I'm just going to take the start position, drag it to the very front. Now I'm going to create a MIDI clip by double clicking in this area and take C2. C2 is always going to be the original pitch here. So we'll take C2 and then we can just drag this MIDI clip to the very end. Now if we hit play. Could also extend the loop to four bars preferably. Highlight this legato. Yeah, excuse me, not four bars, I mean one bar, which is four steps. Three, four, one, two, three, four. And you can also pitch up the sample to C3. So you get that as a higher octave, and you notice that it starts playing quicker. It's like ba da 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 da. Whereas C2 is wah, 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 wah. C4 is really quick. So we're going to stick with C3 for now. And what you could do is just test around with these parameters. By adjusting the start position, you get the most interesting sounds or tonal variations. So let's hit play. Can also click and if you want some extra flavor just put your sample or the granulator into your send effects over here on these three i have delay and reverb set up where it starts to get interesting is when you start messing around with the shape because then it adapts to the shape of a downward saw wave if you turn it to the left you can hear it starts becoming pluckier if you put it to the right, then moves upward, like an upward saw wave. And if you automate the shape, you could map this to a MIDI controller or just automate it with your mouse, you get really interesting grooves. It's like you're getting some kind of an accentuation, like a velocity variation. get what I mean? It's like whereas previously it was now it's it's like it's so interesting I don't even know how to put it into words but I love it love this effect if you add a bit of variation it tries to move outside of the position so it gives you a bit of variation within the sound If you enable the scan, you can see that it drastically moves out of the zone. This can also give you some interesting phrases. Yeah, this one's nice here. Automating the grain size can also give you some very interesting results. If you move it all the way to the left, it starts self-oscillating. It creates like a new waveform because it's so quick. You can get some really textural stuff this way. 
But you see, this is a millisecond value over here. It also explains that in the left panel over here, you can see it defines the size of a grain in milliseconds. How come there's no sync option? I don't know why. But if you do want to sync it to your tempo, you just have to find the right millisecond value. And instead of Googling it all the time, what I did is I found a Max for Live device that calculates that for you in real time. The Max for Live device is called Synchro by a developer called Yeraki. This dude has some really cool stuff. He's the same guy who made the FL sequencer for Ableton Live. So check his stuff out. I'm gonna link it down below. This one's for free. What I'm gonna do is just copy this one and put it onto the lower layer and it'll show you the tempo that you're currently in, which is 120 BPM. So if I adjust my tempo here, you see that it also adjusts all these values. And it's really practical to have this. I'm gonna leave it on 120 BPM and put it to milliseconds because we are working with milliseconds over here. Let's say I wanna have an eighth note. I'll just put the grain size to 250 milliseconds. And if we play, like at first I was confused, but that's not an eighth note. That's a 16th note. It's double the speed. Why is that the case? Because we are playing the sample an octave above. That basically doubles the tempo of the sound. So if we want to actually get eighth notes, we'll have to pitch this guy down an octave to C2. And now if you put it on 250 milliseconds, it should give us an eighth note. You see? Dum, 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 dum. Those are eighth notes. And if you want dotted eighth notes, you could put it to 375 milliseconds. Ooh, -hoo, that's some groovy stuff right here. And if you want to double up the tempo, you just pitch it up an octave. Now you'd have dotted 16th notes. And you can always take this chart as some kind of a reference point. Now if I type in 750 here. So nice. Yeah, I love this. And if you feel like you have something nice, create a new audio track, hit resampling, solo your layer, record arm, and then just hit record. Three, four. And to keep it interesting, you can just move the start position of the sound, you can change the scan, the grain size. Do whatever you want. Just have some fun, record your results into a new audio layer this way. And when you're done, you can just mute the original layer and play around with your audio here. Let me just crank it up a bit because it's a bit quiet here. So hit play. And if there's a particular section that you like, you could just highlight it like this and hit Command L. Or a different section like this. And then you can change the pitch here. And mess around with your warp modes. Beautiful. Ooh, getting like completely different phrasing. And if you want to add some stereo, type in align, delay in your search, go to all, check in that here. I like putting it onto distance and slightly offsetting the right and left channels just by a few milliseconds. You automatically realize that it's really stereo now. but I feel like mono is also cool. Mono is the new stereo. <laughs> yeah, mono is the freaking vibe, dude. A lot of people would just want stereo. I love mono, man. <laughs> Let's put this into our effects again. Wee, you're getting some dub techno here all of a sudden. Duplicate this track then and in the second layer, just select a different loop. You can pitch it up seven half tone steps. So nine plus seven would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, minus two. So you're getting a perfect fifth. This is a perfect fifth. 
seven halftone steps above the root, which always gives you a very harmonious result. And since we're using a different loop, it also sounds rhythmically a bit different than loop number one here. Perhaps you could pan this to the left and this one to the right. I did not expect to get dub techno here, but it's actually kind of a vibe. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, like and subscribe. I'm going to make this project file available on my Patreon page as well as all these samples. You can grab them on lotustunes.com. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.